So in my uh, in uh, the younger younger years, right, uh, I would prefer more takedowns from the waist below uh, because I had better knees, better explosion, I was in better shape, etc. Uh, but as I got more ex more experienced and into more fights, I uh, was starting to realize that definitely going for the, the lower half of the waist. Okay, leaves a lot of time for your partner to get count, uh, for your partner to count on you, and for you to eat a lot of hits. And at the worst case, if he pushes on my head and walks away, I just spent a lot of energy and I got punched a ton of times. So, preferably for me, I would like to get into the upper body control, more like I wouldn't say doing Greco takedowns per se, but a lot more upper body clinching, whether it's around the body, whether it's an underhook head control or even a modified like low back position. I prefer that a lot more because I don't have to eat so much punches and take so much punishment. Okay? Um, so that being said, for example, for this right here, even like this, if you are really persistent, you can actually still reach for that body lock. What I like to do, one of my, my favorite I guess you can say setups or positions to throw my partner off balance is from a 50-50 is I always like to look to take those legs and start playing with those legs. Does that make sense here? So, right here, maybe I pull him to get this leg forward, hook that foot, and there are reactions. And this way I don't have to eat so much punishment. So that's an easy one for everybody to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my partner's leg towards me. The one big mistake, you're going to miss the timing, is if you pull your partner's leg towards you, you step back. Once I go to step forward, you push the leg back up. And you never catch anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to step forward as I pull him towards me. So we meet in the middle. So instead, I'm going to pull. I'm going to meet him at the same time, so I do get that reaction, which is the off balance. So, I pull, I step, look the hook, there's the off balance. As he steps back, I'm now going to tap the knee, drive my hair up in the air, and I'm going to run. It's called a running knee tap. So, from the 50-50 tie-up, looking to offset, set up a uh, knee tap once more, tie up, get rid of the back leg, and with striking it's even easier. You can do here, and you can go, ooh, gel the guy up a little bit, pull, step off, now stay over here, there's your run. What I'm looking to do is I'm not looking to take this leg and lift because it's going to be kind of tough. I'm looking to block so he doesn't keep inching out to keep his balance. That block Combined with this, it's called a shot put. I'm not hitting him. I'm driving and eventually using my shoulder and the upper portion of my bicep to keep driving. And you notice without that hand, saw how we stepped back like that. So from that position, see that bounce from that position, this stops him from inching back to catch his balance. This hand shoots straight up in the air towards direction. Drive and run. And another thing I've really liked a lot is the takedowns help set up the guard passing a lot better than starting on the floor. So if I have the opportunity to roll with somebody lately, maybe not lately, but the past like 10 years probably, I would say that we're on the ground. I go up like this. And I want him to stand so that I can start working takedowns because it's a lot easier for me to pass the guard. Because you have momentum on your side and as your opponent is in the air, the pass is a lot easier because he doesn't have his hips to move and recover. Once your partner's on the floor, he's gonna have the hips to recover. It makes it a lot more difficult. 